Hi, we're going to talk about portfolio websites because we're going to make a portfolio website. Very exciting. All right, so why are we going to make a portfolio website? Well, it's so that you can direct people there who are trying to look at you as a job candidate. Um, it's a place uh, that people can find you. So maybe they're searching online or they found a link from something else and then you're linked, your website's linked to that and it all points to you and so they can come find you. Uh, it's a place to organize your work so you can do a little bit of a different presentation with it than your actual physical portfolio. You can also add stuff to it so maybe you didn't put everything that you wanted to in your portfolio because you needed it to be really concise and quick. Well, you can add stuff to it, you know, add additional explanations and things, make it a little bit, you know, more extensive. All right, so the first thing, of course, is you're going to be greeted with a home page. Of course, we need our name and logo. Some people may not have a logo, that's fine. You at least need your name, and then you need what you do. So you have to figure out how you wanna say that. Um, you know, you may not be exactly, maybe you're just, uh, maybe you're a designer. You're not a graphic designer. You're designing all kinds of things. Maybe you're a cinematographer and an editor. So how do you say that carefully, right? So think about how you wanna describe yourself. Make sure that that's on there, and it really should be, a good thing to put on every page, that name and that tagline. The table of contents will probably also appear on every page, and that's going to be a tricky one. You want it to be very obvious and easy to use. Um, it's going to depend a lot on how you want to organize your site. Then you definitely want something impressive. Uh, for instance, a big old picture, like the best picture you've taken, or maybe a few of the best pictures you've taken, or your reel that you've cut. Some people may choose to put everything they have on their first page, um, but it needs to be something that catches people's attention so that they wanna continue to look at your work and learn more about you. You also need some sort of contact info. Uh, I usually like to put it at the bottom of the page. Some people put it up top. Um, some people choose to have an additional contact page. Some people leave that off and just have the contact at the bottom. The about page addresses who you are, what qualifications and experience you have. I'm um, trying to get a sense of who you are, you know, your personality, or so you're someone that they want to work with. Um, are you busy? Are you looking for work? What kind of work do you want? Um, you're kind of telling them your story and giving them reasons to connect with you and then kind of letting them know where you're at and what you're capable of doing. Other pages you can include um, a separate resume page. Um, it's really good to have your resume written out in text and also downloadable as a PDF so that you can control the formatting. Contact information, email, phone is optional. I put it, but not everybody does. Uh, links to other online accounts. So if you're displaying your work other places, not personal stuff, not like your Facebook party page, uh, but someplace where you have your other work up. Uh, some people also do a contact form Although I think that's a pain in the butt, I just go straight for email. Some people do an image gallery or additional video work. You could do writing samples, you could do a blog. So lots of different ways to enhance, divide up that website. So before you get started, you want to plan it out. Who is this target audience? What are you designing this page for? So is this just like stuff just for you to have to have it or is this stuff that you're trying to sell yourself with like you know it's the difference between I'm posting this for my friends and family versus I'm posting this for a job and then what kind of job and what kind of personality would these people be looking for so really kind of think about who's gonna come to this website or who do you want to come to the website and be as specific as possible if you're like everybody that's not a target audience that doesn't really help you think through it you know but if you're like um the head of a graphic design firm what is that person like right go research that the more specific you can be the better your website will be and of course the purpose kind of ties into the audience you know why why make this website at all yes i'm making you do it but what is the purpose is it to showcase your work is it to get a job um is it for fun? You know, is it just uh, for posterity? You know, what is what is the purpose? So sketch and design it out a little bit. I highly recommend researching existing sites, seeing what works for you, uh, what doesn't about their websites, looking at people in your area, in a field to see how they organize their websites. 
Um, you really need to determine, and this goes back to the table of contents or your navigation, you know, how are you going to divide your site into pages? So like really you could just have one big page with everything on it as long as you divide it or organize it appropriately, right? You know, some people say, okay, well I have my about statement on one page, should my resume go with that? Should it go on a different page? Should my contact be with my about? You know, how, how do these things relate to each other? And again, it's going to be what's right for you. Um, you know, whether or not to have a contact page is a big one. Um, do you want to put all your work on the first page or have separate pages for different kinds of work? You know, um, you really want to be careful. You don't want to make people work harder than they have to, but you also want to organize so that it's clean. So it's sort of a balance. If you pile everything in one spot, it can be overwhelming. But if you hide everything underneath all these different tabs, people won't look for it. So it's a balance. Where Whatever you decide to do to split up your website, make sure that the navigation is obvious. They need to be able to find it, they need to be able to read it, and they need to be able to understand it. So don't hide tabs under tabs um, if you can help it. Make everything top level um, as much as possible. Make it nice big text so people can read it and also make sure they can find it, usually top of the page. Um, sometimes you can go to the left or the right and have a bar, um, but make it easy to see. Finally, when you're planning, um, you're doing some sketches, you're thinking it out, don't let the design of the website overpower your work. It's supposed to supplement your work. So when you think about it, like you go to an art gallery, right, and the walls are usually white because they want you to look at the art. If the walls had wallpaper with patterns all over it, it'd be a little distracting, right? So again, use the design to showcase your work, right? No one's looking at you necessarily as a website designer, unless that's something you want to do, but they're, they're really there to get their information and to see your work. So be careful about that. Don't put any like crazy neon gifts as your background, preferably. <laughs> All right, execute. So you have to make the darn thing. Curate your items. So look at what you have in your portfolio already. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add to this, like something you were sad you left out? Is there something that you could do to illustrate your process? So you couldn't maybe do it in your portfolio, but can you show steps, for instance? Can you talk about how you made this thing, why you made this thing? Um, can you give it a name? Can you give it a description? Show some variety as well. So in the same way that we showed variety in our portfolio, we want to show variety here, show all the things that we can do. and. Please remember, curate, okay? Just because you can include everything does not mean you should include everything, right? You're still curating, you're still choosing. Don't put everything you've ever done up there. You want it to still be your best work, but you can expand upon it. Make sure you prepare your images and files for the web. If they're loading really slow, save it as a smaller file, then re-upload it and replace it. If they're really grainy, you may need to go find the original and instead of using the small version, right? So make sure it looks good and it loads quickly. Write concisely and proofread. People don't like to read long stuff on the internet, so write as clearly and quickly as you can. Please proofread. There's nothing that undermines you more than proofreading, or not proofreading rather. Um, misspellings really get people. Um, and again, provide that resume as text so that they can read it on the website and also as a downloadable PDF. Um, if you can link into your LinkedIn, that's also a good thing to do. Contact information, make it easy to find, right? If they see it, if they see the site, they're like, I want this person, don't make them search for it, right? It needs to be really easy to find. Again, you're not putting up any barriers to this interaction. And then once you built the site, you want to make sure you maintain it. So periodically update it with new work, right? Hopefully you'll be making new stuff. So add it when you can, even when you're working. When you're working, a lot of times you're not looking for a job, but it's good to try to every so often put new work up. Um, a good way to do that is to keep a blog um, and post new work there. And that helps you also share sort of your progress and activity and your growth as a, an individual, right? Um, also keeping that resume updated is important um, if something changes or you volunteer or you have new skills, right? So keep that updated as well, not just adding new work. 
Um, also, just check it sometimes. Like, if you haven't looked at it in a couple months, maybe just type it in. Make sure that it's still there. Make sure that the links to things are working. Sometimes things get old and things get unlinked. So it's good just to check in and dust it off every so often. All right, so how do we build this website? Well, I recommend Wix for people who are not used to website stuff. Um, Wix is drag and drop. You don't have to do any coding whatsoever and you're uploading things and they've got some integrated stuff for Facebook and um, YouTube and all that goodness. Uh, WordPress is something that you can use as well. It's a little bit harder than Wix, um, but it can do more. So there's lots of plugins and things. And if you have your own server space, you can put it on your server instead of, so you're paying for the server space instead of like paying for a company to host it. Um, you can also do free WordPress and it both with Wix and WordPress, it's like dot Wix.com slash blah, 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 right? You get like a really long web address, but it's cause it's free. And Blogger as well, you can use a portfolio template for that. So that's another way to go. There's a bunch of paid options, so if you are someone who's made a website before, you can use Dreamweaver, that's fine. Again, you will have to pay for a host and a, um, a domain name. There's a bunch of other paid services. They vary on how much they're asking and what they can do, so feel free to check those out as well. I'm open to anything that you can come up with as long as you feel that you're able to navigate it uh, on your own primarily. Again, I can provide support, but you're going to have to build this thing. If you do decide that you want to have a website that you're hosting on a server space or your own domain name, you can absolutely do that as well. Some places, a lot of them, like Wix for instance, um, if you pay them a little bit, instead of going to da-da-da.wix.com slash da-da-da, it will just, you can type in, you know, me.com and it'll go directly it'll, to that server. So it'll like redirect it. Um, so that you're not paying to host the actual website, you're just paying for the name and then you're paying for Wix to redirect to that name. So you can still use some of these free services and purchase your own name. It just costs a little bit more usually. Um, so just a lot to think about there. But like I said, if you're just getting your feet wet with this, you can use one of the free services. They'll host it for you. It'll be free and you don't have to do any coding or anything. I've got here a list of professional examples, um, some highly regarded ones. I would take a look at these. I would take a look at some in your area. Just see what people do. You know, what do videographers do? What do how do they organize their website? What do they showcase? You know, what are designers, what colors are they using these days? Or do things move? Or, you know, what are, what are, what's cool on the web? You know, look at it. And then also, as you look at these sites, think about what's working for you. Like, you know, I really like how they did this on their web page, but I found it really hard to find their information. Or I loved how everything worked together, but then when I hit blog, it took me to another website completely and I couldn't get back. You know, there's all these little details and the more sites you look at and think about, the more inspiration you'll get for yours and the more things that you'll see that you might want to do or you might want to avoid. I also have a list of some former student work. Um, these are actually all done on Wix, as you can see, with their giant names, uh, website names. So those are worth checking out as well. Like I said, there's a little out of fancy stuff you can do these days, especially with these free online services. You don't know how, need to know how to code. They have templates and you can completely change everything on the template. If you don't like something, move it around, delete it, replace it. Fantastic stuff. Um, you know, or code from scratch if you're, <laughs> if you're up for it. All right. So start thinking, start planning, collect your stuff together, um, figure out which service you want to use, start looking at websites and sketching, planning out. Um, it seems overwhelming, but I promise you can do it. It can actually be really fun once you start getting into it. So good luck and I'll be here for support.